Hello folks and welcome to this week's review and we're looking at a turntable. It's been a while, hasn't it? Too long. So, about time we did one. This one is from Project and it's the X2B, not the X2, the X2B. And what's the B stand for? Well, you may have already guessed. However, we'll get into that in detail in a second. Prices though, before we go there. Well, we are looking at either £1,399 or US dollars or €1,599. Now, the original X2 weighing in at about 10 kilograms is a rather mature turntable released a few years ago now. But this new iteration, the X2B, adds an important tweak. And we'll talk about that, I think, via a closer look. And welcome to the Closer Look section for the X2B turntable from Project. Now the basic X2 belt driven design offers three speeds. It includes a round belt supplied specifically for 78 RPM play. The X2B switches on via a hidden rocker switch, which you can find underneath the front left portion of the plinth. If you stay in position and raise your head, right on the top of that plinth is a push button speed controller. The motor situated at the center of the plinth is isolated from the plinth using TPE rubber bands, which is an intriguing yet quite effective little design element. On top of that, well, you place your sub platter and that is the thing that holds the belt. On top of that sits the substantial acrylic main platter. To the right is an aluminium tone arm base sporting a one piece, nine inch carbon fiber aluminium combo tube. Now, if you compare this tube to the company's other related sister or brother turntable, the X1, you will note that it's a touch wider than that one. In the box, you get a Connect E phono cable. And this is a cable I approve of. Incidentally, I have a review of it on my website somewhere. I'll put a link below. Now, I noted that the tone arm rests on its cradle and is fixed there magnetically, which is ideal for the security of your arm. I don't know how many tone arm cradles I've reviewed in the past that just look to pop out the tone arm onto the plinth or the platter at a moment's notice. So this magnetic addition is good for security. And as for that cradle magnet itself, well, I did wonder if the magnet itself might influence the turntable and or cartridge in some way. But I think the distance between the magnet and those other parts will be sufficient not to produce any noticeable issues. Now the basic X2 normally arrives, I think, pretty sure, with a Picket 2M silver moving magnet cartridge. The X2B that I have here doesn't. It includes a moving coil, the Quintess Red from Autofon, which is priced at either £319 or €349 Euros or $399. But of course, you get that free, as it were, in the box. Now, as you may have already guessed, the new X2B is a development of the original X2, bringing the X2 up to date and offering a balanced option. So, the rear of this particular turntable offers both single-ended and mini XLR sockets. This means that you can plug the turntable into a balanced phono amplifier and then to a balanced amplifier to keep the balanced signal right from the stylus tip of your cartridge and through the speakers. And that, that is why moving coil is utilized here because that tech is inherently balanced anyway. Finish options include walnut or gloss black or white and the gloss black and white have a very nice piano-like finish. Now, as I say, this turntable can be run in single-ended and balanced mode, but I wanted to give some sort of context to the sound before I hit 
the balanced sound quality test. So to test the turntable, it would therefore be ideal to have a known quality phono amplifier that can handle both modes, single-ended and balanced. The phono amplifier is a critical component when using this turntable, as with any turntable. And that is why I reviewed the Musical Fidelity M6X phono amplifier way back in May of this year, 2023. This was all part of my evil plan. Part one was a review of the M6X itself. And you can find a link for that up above. If you want to check out the phono amp, I would recommend viewing that particular review actually before continuing with this review. So this review in a way is a kind of part two because I'm hooking the balanced phono amplifier, the M6X, to this turntable, which is also balanced. So how does this turntable sound? Well, let's go to those sound quality tests and we will find out. And welcome to the sound quality tests for the Project X2B balanced turntable. Now, the balanced mode is obviously the headline feature here, but I didn't want to do that particular test yet. I wanted to do that test a little bit later on. Before that, I wanted to take a journey towards that point to gain a measure of the turntable on a, on a wider level, you might say. So I began by testing it in single ended mode. For music, well, on the platter I played Japan's so-called live outing oil on canvas and the song Sons of Pioneers. Now this is a pretend live track, only the drums were live, everything else was dubbed in the studio and given a sort of live wash. Hence this is a wholly compromised track in sonic terms. So any turntable has a job to offer a good translation of this mix. Now, I already know, as you will if you've seen the review, that the M6X phono amplifier in single-ended mode is not completely neutral. It kind of leans a little bit towards the edge of upper frequencies. It's not bright by any means, but it kind of leans that way. In mid-range terms, the M6X likes to play on the train tracks. It likes to flirt with danger. As I say, nothing nasty, but you can hear the sound moving to that point. Now the X2B noted that movement, but never accentuated that sound. It never helped to push the mids to a clipping harder edge. That was a good sign. That is, the X2B was speaking truths here. It was describing the sound, telling you like it is. There was no sugarcoating here, and it never exaggerated the story. Again. This kind of feedback was a positive response in my book. And before we move to the balance side, I wanted to give the single-ended mode a chance to shine, to see how far it could be pushed with higher-end phono amplifier equipment. So instead of struggling with the slightly skewed sound output from the single-ended mode of the M6X, I quickly hooked up the X2B turntable to my high-end Icon Audio PS3 Mark II two box phono amplifier. This is a valve based phono amplifier. Now, that particular phono amplifier is open, detailed, and balanced to a T. And I played the same vinyl disc. And in this higher end configuration, well, the X2B really flourished. More air and space in around the mid range. Treble was articulate but also fragile. And there was a greater sense of focus from the vocals. So, there was evidence here of extra capacity from the X2B in single-ended mode. Evidence that future upgrades would be worth the effort in that mode. Now, that said, there was a wrinkle, a single wrinkle in single-ended mode. So what was that wrinkle? Well, the mids sounded fairly balanced, almost neutral. But something was getting in the way. The music sounded... Tense. What do I mean by tense? Well, almost as if, almost as if there was a bit of compression being added to the music. Compression that shouldn't be there. Now I could hear this irritation more via the Icon Audio phono amplifier. 
because I knew for a fact that the Icon Audio was open, balanced to a T, as I've just said. And this sounded wrong. Now, I struggled with this point during the review, and I didn't find the answer straight away. But I was looking at the turntable for the 10th time, and I finally saw what was hidden in plain view. The X2B has an acrylic platter, as I've already said. But in the box, well, in my box at least, you're given a felt platter mat. And that was currently sitting on top of the acrylic platter. And this is a recommended edition by Project. And I'm here to tell you now that in sonic terms, that recommended edition is wrong. If you have an acrylic platter, you should not place a mat on top of it. End of story. Otherwise, you are fighting it. You are fighting the whole nature of the acrylic platter. You fight what the platter does best, draining vibration to lower the noise floor. So I bend, well, in metaphoric terms at least, the platter mass. And would you believe it? The soundstage relaxed for the first time, mid-range information pushed upwards, and I especially liked the finely sculptured detail I could now hear way up high in the upper mid-range area. Noise dropped like a stone. Focus and precision improved and the tension disappeared. Now look, I like felt mats, don't get me wrong here, but at the right time and in the right place. For the X2B, well, it shouldn't be in the box, never mind on the platter. My advice, if you get yourself an X2B, put your vinyl directly onto the acrylic platter. Oh, and in case you're wondering, in this configuration, plugging the turntable back into the M6X phono amplifier, the sound output was now much more civilized as it moved closer to the neutral point. It didn't go all the way there, of course, because I've already done that review, but it was much closer now. Bass, for example, was also much more precise and naturalistic now, while subtle treble effects could be better tracked by the ear. Anyway, let's address the headline feature, the balanced option. I hooked up the balanced cable, which is supplied by Project, from the turntable to the M6X phono amplifier, and then supplied my own balanced interconnects that ran from the M6X to my preamp. So once it was all connected, once it was all up and running, how does the X2B sound? Wonderful. Firstly, the volume shot up, which was wholly expected in balanced mode. So my preamp's gain went down to compensate, but it was the reduction in high frequency noise which really hit me first. So let's get into the weeds here, shall we? Let's give you a bit of detail as to what a balanced version of the X2 really gives you. Well, the vocal, let's look at the vocal, David Sylvian's vocal. For the first time, I could hear little pieces of vibrato from the Sylvian vocal. Little vocal breaks, little imperfections that just sort of humanized David Sylvian. He's a very human person, of course, but the vocal I could hear now was, it failed nicely. It failed in a, in a pleasant way. Little breaks. Overall, via balanced mode, the Sylvian vocal sounded far more attractive. The drum sounds, which were, as I say, the only live element on this track, also offered heightened realism. The sense of percussive control and latent power was immense now. That is, there was a sense of, kind of a sense of restraint from the drum hits, but you could also sense how much power could be accessed if the drummer gave the drums an old fashioned whack. Because there was so much information available to the ear now, you even had time to think of such things in the first place. This was a testament to the mid range insight and treble delicacy here. So that's basically the review of the X2B. Let me give you a few final thoughts just to finish off, then we'll do some pros and cons, and then I'll give you a rating. First up, if you want to use this turntable in single-ended mode, 
then you can, and the X2B will work very well indeed. And you'll have a whale of a time from this neutral turntable design. But really, if you buy this turntable and you don't use it in balanced mode, at least for most of the time, then, well, you're missing out. Now, in terms of partnering, well, the X2B works wonderfully with the M6X phono amplifier from Musical Fidelity in balanced mode. They partner very well indeed, but I'm sure other balanced offerings from Project itself, for example, would work equally well here. Now, look, if you're on a budget, buying both the X2B turntable and a balanced phono amplifier together, that might be a tough ask. It might just be a little bit much. So what you can do is upgrade in stages, and the X2B will allow you to do that. So for example, if you're doing that upgrade thing, I would recommend you buy the X2B first, plug that into your current phono amplifier in single-ended mode, have a nice time listening to that, carry on saving, and then when funds allow, buy a balanced phono amplifier later on. Upgrade your phono amp, and then you've got a wholly balanced setup. At least the X2B offers options and choices. Now, weirdly, and quite by accident, I've been reading up on my Egyptian history of late, and I noted that Cleopatra, late pharaoh of this parish, used to love to bathe in asses' milk. Well, I tell you what, I much prefer to bathe in the balanced output from the X2B turntable. She never knew what she was missing. Pros and cons. And in the good section, well, would you believe it? Balanced mode sound. I loved it. It was beautiful, nicely detailed, very neutral, and would you believe it? Balanced. But I also liked single ended play. Make sure you have a good quality phono amplifier to hand when you're listening to the X2B in single ended mode and it will reward you in spades. Helping with the sound quality, I am sure, is that motor. I like the way it was isolated from the rest of the plinth. And on a granular level, I loved the little tone arm cradle magnet, which kept the tone arm in position and prevented any accidents. And in the bad section, uh, nothing at all. I was very happy with it, which means that I will be giving the Project X2B balanced turntable, an award, a groovy, an eight out of 10. Congratulations to Project. And that's it folks, thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. If you can, please, down below, if you haven't done so already, click on the old subscribe button, would you please? And also the like button would be very nice of you if you can do that. Plus, further down in the description, there's all kinds of links to my website, my Facebook group, if you want to join that, you can, very welcome my Patreon page, check out the latest hi-fi news, etc., because that's where that now lives. And there's another one out this week, another new one. And there was one last week too, and the week before that. So, and there'll be one next week. So if you like hi-fi news, etc., you can find it on Patreon. That's the only place, folks. There's other stuff there too, other exclusive items. So have a browse, why don't you? Anyway, I'll be back, where are we? Uh, Friday, I'll be back Friday with a new music alert. If you want to know what physical product, vinyl, CD, and possibly cassette that I've been receiving that week through the post, music alerts will tell you all about it. I hope to have your company then, folks. Until then, bye-bye for now.